Okay, I'd like to make a very important point about these two equations, or equilibrium equations, right? Some forces and some moment equations. Okay. Well, some forces obviously have just forces in them. And some moments also have forces in them, the moment, <coughs> kind of R cross F, right? And these forces are all external forces, okay? Which means they're external to the to the free body. Okay, to your rigid body that you're considering. Okay, now external forces include weight, for example. Okay, due to the mass of the object, any externally applied force. Let's say you're trying to push something, not that you're applying force, right? or force uh, in a cable. Right, so there's tension. You're trying to pull uh, the cord. Now, that's tension force, also an applied force. Friction. Okay, so any kind of contact surface <coughs> will have friction. And reaction forces at the ports, right, and so on. Okay? Now all these forces <coughs> are very typical of external forces, which you take into account, right? And you use these forces and your equations. The opposite is external force. And the external force <coughs> doesn't appear in these equation at all. You don't use internal forces in your analysis. Okay? And that is because internal forces cancel out each other. Okay? Because of Newton's third law. For any object in equilibrium, all the internal forces okay, for any given internal force, there will also be and always be an equal but opposite reaction and to counter that okay, action. Okay, so that's what uh, Newton's third law says. Okay, so for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. Okay, so <coughs> internally, they cancel out. Okay, and therefore, this rigid body will stay in equilibrium. Okay, so <coughs> just keep in mind all internal forces. Okay, are not part of these equations. Okay. Now, <coughs> sometimes it's your choice of free body diagram. Okay, what do you take as a free body diagram okay, that would affect what force or forces become internal or external forces? Okay, so that's your choice. Example. Look at this example 5.6 in textbook. Okay. You have this cable, okay, wrapped around pulley, and the pulley is um, attached to a wall. Okay, so the pin at this pulley, the pivot point where pulley rotates about, point A, and this rope, uh, one end of the rope is attached to the wall at C. At the other end of the rope, okay, you apply 100 pound force pulling it down. Okay, and this side is you know, vertical. Okay, on the other side, it's a 30 degree angle. Okay. Now you're asked to find the reaction forces at A. Okay, a reaction force at A. Okay, vector. Okay. Now this is a 2D problem, so this means that you're actually asked to find reaction force X component okay, and reaction force Y component. Okay, so they are actually two unknowns. So, <coughs> find the reaction force, okay, and also, if you look at this whole free body diagram, okay, what do you draw okay, just so that the free body diagram that you draw will enable you to find these two unknowns, okay? So obviously you want to choose something that will include these two unknowns. Okay. So let's pick something. Okay. Now we have a couple of things going on here. This whole system right here, we have a rope and we have a pulley. Okay. Now what if we consider them separately? See what happens. So, <clears throat> let's draw the rope. Just the rope itself. Something like this. Okay. And 
and you know, draw separately the pulley. Okay, round pulley. So that's point A right there. Separate free bodies. Okay, so we're gonna call it free body diagram one. Free body diagram two. Okay, <clears throat> so I choose this row as my free body. Okay, and nothing else. So I free the rope up from the physical attachment, right? So just the rope, and then I'm going to draw all the forces acting on this rope. So obviously now we have a hundred pound here. So okay, I do know that. Let's see what else. Oh, right here at the end, I have um, point C. But if I draw a rope, I don't really have to extend all the way to this point C right here. Okay, I can cut it off. I can cut it off right, right here. It's still okay. So exactly what I'm doing here. So again, I'm gonna cut it off here. Okay, so that's a cutoff point. And so at this point, the only force that I have is tension. Okay, so tension force in the rope. Call it T. And it is. This force and a tension force. Or really, is that it? Look at this right here. Now this rope right here is in contact with this pulley. So now that I've separated out this rope from this whole system, I must take into account the force exerted on this rope by the pulley, okay, which is you know, somewhere from here to maybe around uh, here, okay, all the way from here to here. There are forces, okay, it's not just one single force, it's actually a distributive force, okay, continuous force, right? So, it's actually coming this direction, something like this, okay, so the force is actually perpendicular to each and every point okay, along this rope. Okay, now these forces pressure, the pressure force. Okay? So the magnitude of that well, we don't know. Okay? And what kind of distribution we don't know either. Okay? Alright, so there are lots of unknowns here. Okay? The force distribution, right? Force is a force function. Okay? So it's not single number. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> so that's my free body diagram one. Now obviously this is no good. Okay, now first of all, we have this other unknown tension, T. And we have this force, distributive force, okay, which is also unknown. Okay. And third of all, our A and our our A X and our Y don't appear in this free body diagram at all. So this is useless. Okay? Okay, maybe move on to free body diagram two. What about just the pulley? <coughs> well, look at that. For this pulley, sure, now we have our A X and our A Y. <coughs> I don't know the direction, okay, I don't know if it's positive or negative, okay, X and Y, so I'm just going to assume a direction, okay? So, to the right and go up. That's fine. What else? Well, since I've isolated this pulley, okay, from the whole system, I also must take into account the force exerted on this pulley by the rope, okay? And that's exactly the opposite of this right here. So, I'm going from here okay, right to here. So the force will be something like this. Okay. This pressure force. Okay. Look at this right here. So this free body diagram has two of these unknowns that we're trying to look for. Okay. But we also have this unknown distributive force here, which is a big, big unknown, okay? 
So it's useless too, because you don't know how to find this. Okay. If you look at these two together, this force right, and this force, they are equal but opposite. Okay. This force, this distributive force, goes up that way. Okay. This right here goes back down that way. What if we combine these two, right? Combine them, and what happens to these? This guy right here will cancel out this guy, okay? This guy will cancel out, let's say, this guy, okay? So we superimpose these two become internal to the entire system if you combine these two, okay? Whereas individually, if you draw this row by itself, this distributive force is considered an external force. Therefore, yeah, I just drew it right here on this free body diagram because it is an external force, right? external to this rope, okay? exerted by the pulley on the rope. Similarly for this right here. But if you combine them, they become internal. And what's great about internal force, they don't appear in this, these uh, equations. So, a better free body diagram to draw is this. The entire system, pulley and rope system, okay, without an attachment, right? So just two, and now I have R A X, R A Y, I have 100 pounds of given force, I have this tension force. That's it, nothing else. Okay? So, look at this right here. I've eliminated this internal force, okay, this dist distributed force in this free body diagram. And I am now left with one, two, and three unknowns. And three unknowns. I have three equations. Exactly right here. I have two D Brahms, so X and Y. So some forces. X, some forces, Y, and then some moment scalar equation, okay, no more vectors. About some point. About any point. Well, a convenient point or a smart point to choose is point A. Okay, because R A and R R A X and R A Y both pass through point A. So these two guys don't appear in this some moment equation. Okay? So now you have three equations, three unknowns, no problem. Okay? So the math itself, well I'll just look at example five one six, okay, page two seventeen. Right? And just <clears throat> just solve for them. Okay, so the math is very straightforward. Okay? So this illustrates right, the importance of choosing the right free body diagram. Yeah, just so that you can eliminate some forces and make them internal forces. Okay? So they don't appear in these equations at all.